welcome to Coil Coaching's Thriving One podcast. Uh, we have a great topic for today, but we are so glad that you are tuning in. And we have a great topic and we call it healthy deconstruction. Yes. And today, Matt is going to lead us into this discussion. Yes, yeah, so good. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> so excited to be with you guys today. Um, this is a topic I've been wanting to do for a while now. And uh, uh, it takes sometimes it takes a little bit of finesse. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes some great thought process because in reality, and I'm going to get into this, um, uh, deconstruction is an ongoing mm -hmm. process. And we're going to talk about the details of that. Um, I say it can be a sensitive topic because deconstruction has become this buzzword, mm -hmm. uh, specifically in the Christian world. Uh, but in reality, it's a healthy process yeah. um, that is misunderstood. And I would say... Uh, defined poorly yeah. uh, when it comes to the Christian environment, because uh, we all do it, Christians, mm -hmm. uh, believers, not believers, you know, wherever you're at in your journey, um, in the business place, in your personal life. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, but I think it's such a great word and a great topic to lean into because we're all processing through something. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all deconstructing from mm -hmm. something, reconstructing rethinking how we do things mm -hmm. um, and applying the best uh, form of action, beliefs, mindsets in yeah. that season. Uh, and so, you know, we want to talk about that today. It's vital to our growth as individuals and mm -hmm. being a thriving one. Yes. So um, I want to, I'm going to, since we uh, are strong believers in <laughs> Jesus, we love <laughs> Jesus. Jace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a big part of our life, mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't matter if you're in business or in ministry or uh, parent or child, yes. right, uh, in a relationship or not. Uh, this is a great and important topic, but we're going to first come in from uh, the perspective of the Christian uh, world, the mm -hmm. Christian environment, yeah, because um, where we work the most in with mm -hmm. clients uh, and where we operate in the most in our gift set. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get into the personal yeah. space. And then you're going to see why. Yeah. I, I also want to encourage you, um, who you're, you're, you know, as you're listening or watching, um, I, this concept of like coming in as a child, you know, mm -hmm. just really comes to mind. Yes. To where like, if we come in as an expert on mm -hmm. a certain topic, then we have nothing to learn. Yes. You know, we come in and we have nothing to nothing to learn, nothing to receive. And obviously like most of you who are watching mm -hmm. us are adults, you know? And so it's kind of like a, a way of, Hey, you know what? Like, especially if you know who we are personally, then I would invite you into a journey. So not so much like a rigid journey, but like a, I call it a wet cement journey to mm. where like, Hey, let's, let's, let's journey together in this topic. Be pliable. Yes. And Matt and I, our hearts are to bring understanding, you know, hopefully bring wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, and there's no condemnation as we are discussing this. Like, there's no way that we are, you know, like <clears throat> as we move forward with this, and it is a really great topic to, yes. to talk about, you know, like why not start here on a safe place? Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's needed. I mean, needed. it's happening. This is the, the issue. Yes. It's happening no matter what mm -hmm. or where you're at in your own personal journey. So to kind of empower us to actually function in a way that we're created to function in. Mm -hmm. It's so key that we know what healthy deconstruction yes. is. And that's why I preface this, not just deconstruction, but healthy, healthy deconstruction. That, yeah. yeah and I'll, and I'm going to, I'm going like, to point yeah. out in scripture of, sure. of there, you know, Christ uh, mm -hmm. was that on the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a deconstruction, uh, de deconstructing an old mindset yeah. um, and how to move forward. So it's very biblical. Um, yeah. So that's good. But first, I, I'm, I'm we're we're kind of not beating around <laughs> the bush here, but we're hitting this first piece because yes. you might not even know what it is or not even care per se off offhand, but you're mm -hmm. interested in in growing and and becoming a thriving one somehow in your life. Uh, but just to to point out the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, some some people, specifically in the Christian world, have uh, defined the word deconstruction to mm -hmm. mean leaving Christianity. Uh, so there's whole topics 
probably books out there on on the topic of mm -hmm. of this word deconstruction. And so as we're talking about healthy deconstruction, we're not mm -hmm. referring to uh, leaving Christianity or what I would mm -hmm. say leaving Christ, right. um, though yeah. that that happens. That's mm -hmm. a reality that happens. And I was it's it's from my heart, you know, that a big part of us knowing our belonging mm -hmm. uh, and knowing our eternal, knowing our value mm -hmm. comes from knowing our eternal value yeah. in the one that paid a price for us, Christ Jesus, yeah. um, and him winning us back into the opportunity to be in relationship with him. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's so key to, it's foundational to yeah. our, our belonging, um, what we're designed for and in stepping into fulfillment. So, yeah. uh, so it doesn't, we're not referring it to in that definition. <laughs> yeah, I found this definition and I really like it. Uh, it's It says this, deconstruction is a careful and deliberate examination of one's beliefs mm. from the inside. That's good. Um, it's about uh, coming to terms with what you believe outside mm. of your inherited beliefs. That's good, babe. Oh, those beliefs been, that have been yeah. passed down to you. Um, mm -hmm. It's about growing into your faith, not out of your faith. Oh, that's really good. And so I'm going to be using the language mm -hmm. healthy deconstruction to just mm -hmm. define uh, what it actually looks like uh, and what are, what are it's happening already. Mm -hmm. How do we actually do it well or yeah. in a healthy way? Yeah. So um, first, I want to I want to kind of start off. And if you want to jump sure. in at any point, yeah. Um, yeah, I think the first uh, great. I, I given a definition of deconstruction, but what are we deconstructing from? Yeah. Can I share a quick thought before yeah. you jump in? Yeah, I yeah. know you have great thoughts and mm, okay, so awesome. Um, I read this somewhere and it really resonated with me. Mm. So maybe you're listening and you're like, okay, I'm in this podcast. And um, um I, I read it somewhere that most Christians deconstruct not because they want to get out of their faith, mm -hmm. but because they want to keep their faith and relationship with Jesus. Right. So if that's you, like be encouraged with that, you know, as we dive into like, what do we deconstruct from? So from that, well, you know, hey, we're jumping into like, what do we really deconstruct from if it's not because of our relationship with Jesus? Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So... So, so jumping into, okay, what, what are we deconstructing from? And I think that's so key to kind of really pin a point here on what is mm -hmm. this topic talking about? And it, it touched a little bit in that definition I read to you, but basically uh, what the thing that we're deconstructing from are beliefs. Yes. So beliefs are the truths that we hold on to as our reality, mm -hmm. how things play out in life. Um, and we're deconstructing or we're, we're coming to a point in our life where we're questioning our beliefs. And that's where the topic of, you know, leaving the church or deconstructing away from right. the church yeah. uh, kind of gets its place. But the reality is I'm deconstructing um, from beliefs that no longer serve a purpose mm -hmm. or they limit and hinder us from being the authentic person that God created us to be. That's good. Okay. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's around beliefs, not necessarily the belief in Christ, mm -hmm. but the belief in maybe structures, yes. uh, belief in realizing that certain relationships in our life, yeah. be it in church ministry, in business, or in family, mm -hmm. aren't really experiencing or expressing uh, Christ's love. And I'm going to get into that more mm -hmm. here soon. Yeah. Um, so when we're not being who we are designed to be, we feel confused mm -hmm. and it can create frustration Yeah. Uh, when that frustration reaches a tipping point. Yes. Okay. Some kind of pain happens. Mm -hmm. And I would call this uh, growing pains. Yeah. And so in life, when <laughs> we, when the word de deconstruction comes up or when we're experiencing transition mm -hmm. uh, that requires deconstruction or questioning or examining, right. Hey, this belief system isn't serving me anymore. Yeah. Uh, or, and it's not about being <clears throat> selfish. It's just like, Hey, it's not working anymore. Like yeah. if I was, uh, you know, had a financial system when I was single and right. I handled my finances a certain way, but when I get married, I had to, it had a shift. There's yeah. two people now, part right. of it. So 
if I just did whatever I wanted with my money, like mm -hmm. I was single, okay, that way of thinking, that model of my belief mm -hmm. systems doesn't function working yes. in relationship. Yeah. Because sure. obviously for us, we agree upon mm -hmm. what we spend our money yeah. on, especially higher uh, value mm -hmm. stuff, right? We, I remember when we started out, we were like, okay, <laughs> I we that. won't talk, <laughs> we won't spend uh, money uh, without letting each other know, unless it's over uh, $20. Uh, or it's under, $20. under $20. So, so <laughs> this was just a way that we were yes. able to learn to communicate. Yeah. So I'm not going to go spend, because obviously when we were first married, we were just off the mission field at that right. time. So we didn't have anything. Well, that was like 16 years ago too. You right. know, $20 was still a lot. Right. <laughs> so, so that's an example and it's a simple one, yeah. but the reality is, is it applies in so many places of our life because mm -hmm. when we are transitioning in life and you might yeah. be in a transitional space in your life, yeah. I would say we're, we're always transitioning somehow, but mm -hmm. major transitions, like yeah. my example, getting married, that's a major transition. Mm -hmm. So you have to deconstruct how I, I used to behave as yes. a single person and yeah. reconstruct then how I was going yeah. to do life yeah. in relationship. Yeah. And and more specifically in our relationship with God, as you mm -hmm. mature from a new Christian uh, into a more mature mm -hmm. believer, you're yeah. going to find that you are growing and old belief systems, yeah. um, old things that maybe you got away with being a, a, a <laughs> kid, okay, in Christ, yeah. God let you get away with, but mm -hmm. now he's saying, hey, it's time for us to mature it's time for us to grow yeah. up and so those are painful times mm -hmm. i know yeah. i know you know getting married uh you know uh having to to partner with finances though it wasn't hard it still mm -hmm. was a dying to myself yes. and a picking up a mutuality in mm -hmm. relationship yeah so it's yeah. about shifting or deconstructing yeah. our beliefs that are um no longer mm -hmm. serving the purpose of yeah. where we were yeah or they're where limiting us. Yeah. Right. And where we're going. And I know even for us, yeah. uh, we can relate this to business. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we've been in the nonprofit uh, ministry world, uh, missionaries. Uh, and so learning to do business, we've had to totally mm -hmm. deconstruct some of uh, the way that we did finances or how we communicate or what right. we do or how to do yeah. uh, business because it's different than doing <clears throat> ministry. Yeah. Um, and so that was a big deconstruction process yeah. also that yeah. had reconstruction mm -hmm. that was happening. Yeah. And I think also sometimes we have to understand that deconstruction is not um, a new thing. You know, like I think, especially like if I had a promotion mm. or if I went into a new job, I still would have to come in as a beginner. Right. And maybe sometimes deconstruct the way I used to do things in my old job exactly. or my old position that no longer serves in my new role. Right. And I think that there's a healthy way of doing that to where like, hey, who I was wasn't a bad thing. Who I was allowed me to come to where I am now. Right. And so even though I'm deconstructing some of those things that no longer the systems and that no longer serve my current reality or where I'm headed, um, I'm also reconstructing at the same time. Because when you're deconstructing, you're reconstructing, you know, like when I get a promotion, I'm deconstructing some mm -hmm. of the things. And then but at the same time, when I'm being taught new things, then I am reconstructing. You right. know? So, so in a way, like, obviously, that's not the full topic right now. But in a way, it helps you totally. realize like, hey, you know, when you're in a promotion, although that's a good thing, you may need to let go of some things that will not serve where you're going. Yeah. Because it so will good. limit you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> good. So good. Mm -hmm. It's a real topic. It's real <laughs> life. It's real life. Um, so here's another question. You can you can jump in and answer it. Yeah. Answer it along with me. Um, why do people end up deconstructing? Mm -hmm. I touched started touching on a little bit, but let's look into a little bit more to really understand yeah. what's going on in our maturing process. Why do people yeah. end up deconstructing? Wow. Yeah. I, uh, I guess like I could go in with this example. Um, it may be like threefold, but I'll put it towards deconstructing. Uh, I remember maybe a year and a half ago now, or two years ago, I got rear ended. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, um, and the reason I got rear ended is that I was driving on a green light 
and a pedestrian decided to jump in front of my car. Mm -hmm. So I had to like, I don't want to hit the person. So I put on my brakes, obviously, but it was still green light. And so there was not enough time for the person behind me right. to see that because the person behind me didn't see the person I did. And so for him, he, he did, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I could hear the screeching oh, sound right. of the, the, the brakes behind me. Yeah. And I braced myself. I got hit. Right. Pretty bad. Good news is the person didn't get hit. Thank the Lord. Yeah. But I did. And so in my mind, normally I'd be like, oh, I'm going to drive to the side so the person behind me can drive behind me and we can exchange information. But that didn't happen. I waited. I sat there and this car drove by me and I'm like, oh, that, I don't think that that's the, the car. Right. <laughs> and then I waited for five minutes. Oh, maybe that was him. And then he wanted to come, you know, go around, come over. Ten minutes passed by, nothing. I just got rear-ended, hit and run mm -hmm. and although it wasn't my fault okay my car was still damaged yeah and so i still had to go and take my car and do all the necessary things i need to do get a hold of my insurance company mm -hmm. um i still need to you know look for ways like where do i send my car in and then i actually had to do some massage physical therapy to help with some of the body trauma i experienced and what am i saying here like i'm saying here like sometimes like when we reach that tipping point in our life mm -hmm. and we start questioning like why am i even doing this you know like i should have waited for that guy or if i had if i to be honest if i kept waiting for that guy to show up or whoever, I don't even know if a guy or a girl, mm -hmm. then I would never have been able to reconstruct and take care of my car. Right. And I think sometimes like when we reach to that tipping point and we start to question, you know, some of the things like, why do we do what we do? Why do we say what we say? Um, sometimes we wait for somebody else, mm. somebody else to give us the answers or somebody right. else to apologize, you know, somebody else to take ownership of right. the part of deconstructing because a lot of people who are deconstructing they are waiting for somebody else to apologize right and for me if i had waited for that guy who never took ownership of what happened to my car then my car would still have been wrecked right so i know i'm jumping the gun here but <laughs> i'm i'm encouraged i i, I feel like like yeah. when people deconstruct in that way sometimes when you deconstruct why you deconstruct it doesn't have to rely on other people's ownership right. for you to do it. Right. Like you can actually take ownership of your deconstruction and you can actually go after people like Matt and I have clients who are in that process. Mm -hmm. We could come in. We could be a safe place yeah. for you to process, process your yeah. questions. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is like, Go for it. Because sometimes people don't, even if they start their, up their tipping point, they don't go there. Right. Because of fear of like, my leaders are not going to hear me or my family's not going to believe me, you know, but but if you're in that space, go for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think you, you bring up an interesting point here. Um, that's a part of all of this is sometimes we don't like the word deconstruction mm -hmm. because we know we're stuck in it yes yes there's there's it's one thing if you're moving through mm -hmm. deconstruction and i would right. define that as healthy deconstruction yeah um it's another thing being stuck in deconstruction mm -hmm. um you know you're stuck um but mm -hmm. you don't know what to do yeah and i think that's what's so key what you were bringing up is sure. finding support yeah. to move through mm -hmm. that valley Yes. You know, like like the Psalms say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Yay. I will fear no evil. Well, we you won't fear any evil because somebody is with you. That's good. AKA Elohim. You know, yes. in scripture is referring to God, right? right? But at the same time, having uh physical support, right? Mm -hmm. Actually is a humbling process. Yeah. And I love in James it says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Yeah. And to move through deconstruction, we need uh grace. Yes. Or grace is the uh, ability to do what God requires or the empowerment to do what you're really capable of doing. 
Yeah. Uh, and so support from others is a key element to that because sometimes yeah. the pain or the confusion is mm -hmm. so close, you can't really see past it yeah, and you absolutely. need someone else to help you navigate around the, the hurdle. Mm -hmm. And why, so also now transition yes. over to why do people end up deconstructing? It's because, and I like the word that you use, it's a tipping point in their life, or I would mm -hmm. say a transitional time. And sometimes we're aware of the transition and sometimes the transition kicks us upside the head, okay? <laughs> we weren't seeing yeah, yeah, yeah. it coming. Uh, and that could look like uh, relationally. Sure. Um, so uh, we've been in the church, I've been in church my whole life. Um, we've been doing ministry for uh, over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I've had many, and Lindsay also, but I've had many experiences where yeah. life, uh, people, uh, environments mm -hmm. have kicked me upside the head, not recognizing it. Mm -hmm. And I say kicking upside the head because I want to be a visual of how pain comes sometimes. Yeah. And we normally don't look mm -hmm. at a problem until there is pain involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it could be a simple example could be, uh, you know, I'm getting older now, right? I'm in my 40s and uh, I recognize parts of my body aren't functioning the way they did when I was in my 20s. Sure. It took me all of my 30s to recognize that, but I, am, I have arrived. I am in my <laughs> 40s, <laughs> accepting that my body doesn't function like it was in its 20s. It doesn't or recover, right? Um, uh, and what what does that mean? Well, it means there's things going on. There was, there's, has been things going on in my body that I didn't know that was a problem. Yeah. Uh, and still pain was involved mm. when pain happened though. It took me all my thirties to figure right. it out. Right. Yeah. Uh, until it came a real problem, a real pain. Mm -hmm. And once I started giving attention to that pain, uh, and started trying to figure out, Hey, okay, let, let me see what's going on. And then what can I do? Yeah. Then my deconstruction from thinking I was 20. Yeah. Right? So physically, more physically, yes. also emotionally too. That was a big area of growth in my mm -hmm. life in my late 30s. Uh, recognizing that this pain is trying to tell me something. Mm -hmm. So if you experience pain in uh, any culture, be it uh, business, family, be it uh, church, mm -hmm. ministry, okay? If you're experiencing pain, that pain's trying to reveal something to you. Mm -hmm. And in that pain, it's saying we need to deconstruct because whatever yeah. we were doing before yeah, yeah. was working for us, but mm -hmm. now it's not. Yeah. It's, and, and a lot of times it's not necessarily your fault. There's a lot of factors that go into yeah. it. Yeah. You ignoring it, the problem can definitely increase mm -hmm. the pain and the problem. Yeah. But when we get faced with pain, uh, yeah. be it wounding, uh, mm -hmm we are faced with what am I going to do about it? Am I going to recognize it? Am I yeah. going to see what's going on? Is it a cycle? Yeah. How am I going to move through it? So why people end up deconstructing is they do, they reach that tipping point, mm -hmm. be a season, uh, be it uh, an environment that actually they shouldn't be in because it's mm -hmm. toxic, okay? right. be it a family yeah. Yeah. Uh, unit, be it a, a ministry or church environment, be it a business, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and we've been holding on to the culture and the community and realizing that that we don't fit that community anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I know doing missions, I've, I've come in and out of environments, uh, doing my mission-based based work, uh, nonprofit stuff. Right. And there's, in all the transitions, um, I'm a little slow to recognizing that I need to transition. <laughs> to my own fault. A year slower. I'm getting. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. Because I'm so loyal. Yeah, I'm so loyal to environments. Sure. But there comes places. There has come in each season where I've matured out. Doesn't mean I'm better than. It just means that where I'm at my journey doesn't fit there. And for me to continue, yeah. I need to take uh, the next step of faith. Because mm -hmm. I don't know about you. But I've experienced reaching uh, in my growth ceilings yes. of leadership. Mm -hmm. And it's a big part of my calling in my life is leadership. Mm -hmm. And so serving in an environment and reaching a lid and, and not be able to push through because it was my season to transition. Yeah, yeah. And that can create pain, especially, you know, if you're in a box or when you're in a kid, kids in the shoes that don't fit anymore and they're yeah. like, 
I love this shoe. We have history. You know, I want to keep this shoe on. But right. you're growing out of it. It's okay to transition to a different shoe. Yes. yes. Um, how you transition is is important. Yeah. But sometimes it's not always up to you how well mm -hmm. you can transition. Yeah. So that, kind of some different topics related to that because it's a big yeah. it's a big subject in and of itself. But I really feel like I really feel like God's speaking out mm -hmm. for you guys today, specifically like uh, embrace. Yeah. The pain. Listen to the pain. Embrace yeah. the growing season. Yes. Those shoes that used to fit and they used to support you, or that mm -hmm. belief system that used to fit and used to support you yeah. is doesn't fit you anymore. Yeah. And you need to grow into who God's mm -hmm. calling you to be. Yeah. I think that's pretty important, like what you're you're saying, um, to be able to recognize. Mm. I realized though, like, you know you may be asking like, well, you, you don't know what happened to me. Right. Matt. You don't know what happened to me, Lindsay. You don't know what's been done to me. Mm -hmm. What You don't know what I've done. You know, like there's always that question. Mm -hmm. And I want to recognize that and say, we hear you. Yes. And we see you, you know, like the pain is real mm -hmm. and um, it's there. You know, if you're in that space, like we're not negating anything that you've experienced, what's been done to you. Or right. what you've done, you know, and but one thing that I would want to encourage you is that don't allow your lowest moments in life, whether it's been done to you or you've done it, the lowest moments in your life to be your lifelong label yeah. as a person. Right. It's okay to acknowledge it. Like for me, as a person who's like always looking at the bright side, I have come to see the other side of the coin where I also need to sit in the dark. Yeah. So I can further appreciate the bright side. Yeah. You know, or I need to sit in the dark because the dark is also a place where you can get healing, you know, and sometimes that that's what's needed. And but when you're sitting in the dark, you know, it's you and Jesus. And if you're in a place where like, yes, I'm ready and I want to talk to somebody, I want to reach out. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like you may have leaders and people in your life that you trust you know, that you have history with, go for that. But if you don't have any, come to us. I mean, I know I'm plugging this in right now, but I am doing it because I did it. Like I right. thought after, after people, after a group of friends, there were like a handful of them, but, but it helped me. It helped me in my process and in my journey. And there are times where I'm alone with the Lord. And that's so important. You know, yeah. it's key to this deconstruction. So it's just like you and God. And there's room for that, but there's also room for the community aspect, even if that community is like two or three people. Yes. You know? And so I wanna I wanna share that with you guys that we understand that there's pain involved and the yeah. pain is real. Um, but and we're here for you to say that yes, that there's hope and you can get out of it, but at the same time, we're also gonna sit with that with you. Yeah. You know, if you don't know what to do and you're watching this and you're like at the end of your rope please reach out to us and we will journey with you. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. And I, I just think, felt to say that. Yeah, right? Because yeah. mm -hmm. that's important. Like mm -hmm. uh, pain is a part of our growing process. Yeah. I know as I was growing as a young man, I'm 6'5". Mm -hmm. uh, and when I was growing throughout my teenage years, I was growing rapidly and it had so much pain in my knees uh, specifically. And I was an athlete. And so it was really affected my performance. Uh, and, but I knew that, and this is something I've been telling my daughter, because she wakes up in the middle of the night with uh, shin splints, you know, because she's like, yeah. my bones are growing, it hurts. And I'm the, I'm the massager in the family. So I massage mm -hmm. her legs. Yeah. Uh, that put Vicks. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to the Filipino side of massage <laughs> and Vixing up. Um, but that uh, pain is a part of the growth. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of times, especially when I was younger, and I first started feeling the pain, and even for Madison, uh, you don't understand why you're experiencing pain. Sure. Yeah. And again, pain reveals uh, there's a place of growth that is required mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. is needed. I think it's the yeah. best way to say it. Pain yeah. always points that there is something needed. Yeah. So if pain is involved uh, specifically uh, to a relationship or an environment, man, having clarity to support yourself sure. uh, through that is mm -hmm. so key. It requires help. And I, yeah. and I'm so gracious that, you know, in each season I've transitioned, I've been a part of several um, ministries, several mm -hmm. large ministries. Mm -hmm. And when it's been time for me to transition, 
there's always some form of pain or mm -hmm. loss that was yeah. attached to that transition. And God's always been faithful mm -hmm. to surround me with people. If it's people I've reached out to or asking God to bring people in my mm -hmm. life. And um, I think I, I, we're going to end it on this note. Okay. And I want to, I want to pray for you mm -hmm. specifically related to this topic and um, allowing the right team of people to yeah. surround you. So yes. if it's somebody that you're paying for coaching or counseling, or if it's a uh, uh, friendships mm -hmm. to come into your life, I know in this last season before starting um, our business and ministry here with Coil Coaching, mm -hmm. I was praying, Lord, um, I need to be around men that know how to do business. Yeah. I don't know anything about <laughs> business. I've been doing ministry and serving for years. Mm -hmm. And God was so faithful to bring a group, uh, a small group of men, five men that I got plugged into almost right away. Like yeah. God's faithfulness is, is so good. And so I want to release that testimony. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. men's group has been a phenomenal uh, empowerment to me moving forward in success in my personal life and in uh, my life doing business and yeah. ministry. And That's so I want, so I want to pray uh, for your mm. team. Yeah. All right. If you want to call it your healthy deconstruction team, mm -hmm. your support team, mm -hmm. that's what I consider what we do in our role uh, in coil coaching. Uh, and then the next podcast, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into uh, what healthy deconstruction actually looks like and how yeah. to do it. Yeah. Uh, so but that's a longer topic. Uh, and I want to leave time for that. So I'm going to yes. pray for you and release that over you, the community mm -hmm. connection, because we all need to belong, especially if you're in transition out of a uh, a community or an environment, be it work, uh, be it a ministry or church, or even be it your a family, a rough situation going on in your family yes. and you're trying to figure out what to do. All right. So Papa God, I yeah. thank you so much uh, for your faithfulness mm -hmm. that you are Elohim. You are God with us. Yes. And Lord, we're not meant to do it alone. We're meant to do it in community. Mm -hmm. But Lord, for us to really grow and experience you, we need to be in healthy community. Yeah. So I pray for individuals mm. and I pray for small, small groups of people. I pray for new friendships that mm. are able to be empathetic and compassionate and understanding to where each person that's listening to this podcast or watching mm -hmm. it, uh, bring those people into your, to their life. And I just, I just want to invite mm -hmm. you to also uh, pray a prayer after we end this and just ask God. And this is a prayer that I prayed when I was transitioning and needing a, a community uh, was, Lord, may you bring the people into my life mm -hmm. that uh, will be empowering and mutually beneficial. Yeah. And so I bless you guys with that. Mm -hmm. And I just thank you that, Lord, you are faithful and you don't always do it to the way the way we want to do it, <laughs> but you are faithful and so yeah. i bless each listener and each watcher today mm. and we just say we love you guys and we are here for you and we believe in you yes amen yeah that's so good yeah great topic uh, i love i love this topic yes. i'm excited about growing it over mm. the next uh podcast or two yes because so i think this is what we would we could you know this is like a, a part one you know like yeah. why do we deconstruct, you know, and then the we'll dive the importance of this and then we'll dive into like it. the how to do the healthy mm -hmm. deconstruction part on our next podcast. Yeah. But exciting news, like yeah. we started our Kingdomized One program. Yeah, it's our last... personal development yes. program. Yeah. So it's like a personal development mentoring and also some leadership in there for with coil coaching. So that's yeah. what we call it. Kingdomized one, you know, like we kingdomized kingdomize you so you become the kingdomized one yeah the kingdom of love yes how to steward and, and walk in the kingdom of love yes yeah. so we just had our first group session um and we are still accepting new students so um if you're watching this and you're wondering like hey how can i get into a community right. for the next six months like no intentionally going after what you want like pretty much like yeah. what you want to see your life in the or, next six or months. needing support needing to support take that as next well. big step be it yes business or a relationship mm -hmm. yeah i love the phrase that you said recently related to where you want to be in the next six yes. months why don't yes. you go ahead and say that because so, it's so powerful yeah so some of the students that have come in you know i've asked them these questions mm -hmm. before to make a decision yeah you know it's it's almost like like how would you feel if you 
are stuck in the same spot six months from today. Right. You know, don't let fear stop you from going after the quality of life that you want to live in six months. Right. So it's so giving the power back to you. You know, not the one thing that I talked about earlier on, not waiting for somebody else to do something or say something so you can get back on track. Yeah. So that the power belongs to you. So you have a decision of what you want to see yourself or the quality of life you want to live in yeah. after six months. Yeah. So, so come join us, you know, like we meet every other Thursday as the group for six months, and then you get a video training every other week. So there's some time for equipping, learning and activating and processing in between. Yeah. And then you can you do it with a group of people. And then within that six months, Matt and I will meet with you one on one three times. So we can personally help you and see like how you're growing and what you need and any guidance you need within the program. Yeah, so it really is a perfect time to do that because I do believe that God is shifting us quickly. Yeah. And at any given moment, you know, you're watching this and God could be like, I'm shifting you from waiting on it to walking in it. Yeah, that's so good. But yes. there is a preparation time. And yeah. so, but it's up to you, you know, so how you jump into that. So we want to invite you to join us, you know, and we are offering a significant discount if yeah. you want like $300 off the full price um, and also like a monthly discount if you choose to do a monthly thing email us at info at coilcoaching.com and say I'm ready and I want the discount sign me up yeah and we yeah. will get back to you or you can also go to our website coilcoaching.com we'll, mm -hmm. we'll put them in the comments below Yes. Uh, but and uh, our Kingdomize One program is there also. And you mm -hmm. can just reach out to us and email us and say, hey, I want a veil of that discount. Yeah. Uh, let us know. We'll we'll get you well, plugged in. Yes. Bless you guys. Yes. We look forward until next time when we talk about um, how to do healthy deconstruction. Bye bye.